All right, today we're doing a full breakdown of what it means to play a spread on offense in Search and Destroy. You know, you may have heard it as playing for picks or playing default in games like CS or Val, uh, but we're going to do a complete breakdown on what the strengths and weaknesses of uh, playing a spread is and what it actually means uh, when you're going into a round in Search and Destroy. So to start off with the basics, let's talk about what it means to actually play a spread. So when you're talking about playing a spread, everyone is going to be basically holding their own lanes by themselves. You're playing super passive waiting on the enemy team to actually make any sort of moves uh, but you're just trying to gain info for later in the round where you're going to end up making a mid-round decision and then use some teamwork and actually go and coordinate a play based on that mid-round decision so as you can see here we did play a lot of spreads on hotel specifically uh, just because we felt it more natural to play a spread on this and then make a mid-round call based on what we were seeing throughout the entire map so let's dissect you know the strengths and weaknesses of a spread setup so to start off with the strengths one of the positives is you can really disguise your motives on offense by playing spreads you know you're not really outright hitting a or b you're just playing slow playing reactive to the defense and see what you can work off based on the information that you get so it's really hard on the defense to determine what you're doing uh, in the middle of the round because you're not giving them anything yourselves and by constantly playing those lanes and getting that info you're not pushing into something completely blind you know as long as you're playing those lanes correctly and making sure that you actually are receiving info and not just you know playing corners you can actually see what's going on the map uh, on the defensive side based on any attacks that you might be hitting or shots that might be going down this type of setup also really helps if you want to be unpredictable and switch it up later on and actually you know fast hit one of those sites because they're probably not going to be expecting it as long as you are playing those spreads early on in the game you know if you just go full on for hitting a uh, they're not going to be ready for it if they're just expecting you to go into that spread once again so this forces the defense to really be on their toes and be ready for anything because technically you don't have to be spreading every single time uh, you can only do it maybe one or two times maybe at the beginning of the game just to feel out the defense and see what they're doing it's also really good to give Give you options every single time you know if you can really make those calls for your team you can really be unpredictable in what you do every round because every round is going to be different based on what the enemy team is doing so by playing a spread you're not limiting yourself to just fast a's or just fast b's or just one site in general you're really just being unpredictable for the defense uh, because anything can happen in the round and probably the biggest strength of the spread is because you're playing so slow uh, if defenses become impatient and start getting aggressive you can really punish them for being too aggressive you know if they try and hit out a lane because they don't see anything there but you've been holding it on an off angle you can really punish them by getting that first blood and then working a mid-round decision based off of that man advantage so some of the weaknesses are and it's basically the opposite of those positives because it is so slow the defending team if they're not giving you anything to actually work with you're basically starting the round back over again but just with less time uh, once you actually try and make that call later on in the round and if you aren't actually getting that information uh, you're basically pushing in blind as if you were just starting the round and hitting one of those sites uh, to begin with and sometimes even if you get a first blood and you start making that mid-round call if you didn't get any information uh, elsewhere on the map you might be going to something blind and can go into you know a cross setup by the defense or something that they've already set up uh, and it could be really detrimental for what you're trying to do now probably the biggest weakness of playing a spread is since everyone is just holding their own lane uh, pretty passively if you yourself are a pretty aggressive player and start ego challenging or really pushing aggressively yourself you know you're really susceptible to actually getting first blooded yourself or getting teamwork by the defense you know if they're being aggressive on the defense but actually working together let's say two guys on one lane you're susceptible for getting teamwork and getting first blooded and that can just really kill your round outright so when is playing a spread actually good you know it's actually really good if you have a really good igl that can make those mid-round calls and adjust to what is being thrown at as his team you know if you don't have someone uh, that can make those calls or really has good game knowledge on what to do mid-round it's really going to hurt you uh, later on if you're trying to play those spreads a lot it's also really good at the beginning of the game because if you want to play a spread you know first or second offense just to feel out what the defense might be doing it's a really good basis for later on in the rounds when you want to try and switch it up be unpredictable but have that basis of knowing what they like to do uh, on their defense and lastly if you just want to slow the game down let's say you haven't been winning your offenses let's say you've been hitting outright towards one or the other site it hasn't been working you can kind of use a, a spread as like a reset button a lot of teams will do this where they're just losing rounds they want to reset everything just play a spread slow it down and make sure that you can try and make 
uh, a mid-round call and win around that way. And on the other side, playing a spread is bad when you first don't have one of those players that's an IGL that can make those type of calls or make those type of calls well. And it's just going to really hurt your chances of actually winning the round because you're not actually making progress on the map mid-round. Or even more importantly, if you don't have a correct setup uh, that you want to do. And let's say that setup does not actually cover all the lanes. So if you're not covering all the lanes, you're not getting as much info as you could. And you might be missing out on info that could be detrimental to your team. Uh, because if they hit that lane or hit that specific route, you can be susceptible to getting first blooded. And again, once you get first blooded in a spread, it's pretty hard to rebound in the round. So let's break this round down specifically. So we're going to start off here, uh, number seven and number six. Uh, are gonna be working this right side of the map, the diner side of the map. Seven is holding the refrigerator lane. Six is holding the TV and this little B connector lane. Number five is actually gonna throw his tack, try and land a stun right around here uh, to help out number six in case someone on the enemy team was actually trying to go and hit through beacon here. And then number eight is gonna be playing a little bit safe uh, towards spa here, making sure that no one is pushing, you know, super aggressively onto the A site for the defense. So as you see here, number five and number eight actually throw their attack mid and then eight is going to wrap back. Number five backs off away from him just a little bit in case they were rushing mid. Uh, and now this is our full on spread. So as you can see here, everyone is playing their own sort of lane. You know, this is a lane, this is a lane, here's a lane and here's a lane. Everyone is playing their lane, trying to get information on what the enemy team is doing. And then we're going to make a mid round decision based off of that. On the other side, what you can see is LAT is playing three towards this A side, only sending one towards the B side. So they're really heavy countering towards this A, looking for a fast A push. Now from this, because of the space that Ant gets here at Beacon, he's gonna be able to see number three here and then call out to number eight, see if they can actually teamwork this number three guy and get a kill on him. And that's exactly what happens. As soon as number three is backing off, number eight is going to get the kill. So a lot of times when you're playing these spreads, you're trying to be working these picks. That's why a lot of times people call it playing for picks. Uh, because you're really just looking for that info and then you can coordinate something based off of that. So we do get the pick on number three. Unfortunately, Brandon does get traded by number one here, but what he can do now is relay that information to the rest of his team. So now that they know that two guys were A and you can see number four starting to inch his way up to try and make some pressure towards this diner side, number seven is actually gonna get the kill over there. So now we know two were A side and maybe even a third if we saw his tax as well from top bed. And now we know that B site is pretty much wide open because a lot of times teams will only send one person there. And if, especially if you did see that third guy towards the A side, you know B is completely wide open. That's why we make the call to have Ant go inside a kitchen and then start making a play for anyone that might be trying to rotate uh, from A to B here. So in LAT's mind, they're gonna be wrapping this way because they know once number four dies that we're gonna be trying to get onto this B bomb site. Little does he know we're actually just gonna be pushing out of this looking for kills knowing that they're gonna be trying to rotate. So we're gonna be trying to take this mid pressure and completely counter them that way, get some kills and then maybe go for a plant later on. So as you see, we push through kitchen, we push through mid, get a kill on number two. We see last guy alive is number one. So number five is gonna go over towards A to plant. And then we're just gonna have a free plant. And now this is a really good setup here. If you have someone planning over here, you can play this little corner, see this cross completely in case they wrap back towards uh, the A side. So as you see, Anne is holding this diner perfectly. Number seven is holding this cross and we end up getting the kill on number one. Okay, let's do another round here. So kind of the same premise here, number five and number eight are gonna throw their tacks here. Uh, to try and stunt number four, who was actually gonna try and push Beacon. We actually do get the info on number four pushing this and you'll see this later on. And then number five and number eight are gonna play a little bit more passive just like you saw before. Uh, actually, instead of wrapping back towards the spa, uh, number eight is gonna play this little heady here, watching for any A pushes once again. Number five is gonna make his way back towards these stairs and watch uh, the entire main lobby. And then number six and number seven are kind of gonna do the same thing. One's gonna go towards uh, the diner, the other one's gonna go towards Beacon. On the other side for LAT, once again, three towards A. Uh, instead of one guy B, he's gonna go mid to Beacon. Uh, so you'll see how this plays out and how it could also be detrimental to any teams that might be playing a spread. So it's important on a spread to really have good tactical uses. As you can see here, number five is gonna hit number four uh, with his stun. So that gives us that information. So as long as you're using your tax to continuously get information, you know, the more the better. Uh, you can really just make more plays off of it because you have more info. So since we know that number four is Beacon here, number six is gonna challenge him. He wins this gunfight, but it's important to notice how important that tactical from number five was. You know, that information gave us a leg up on the gunfight because Ant was able to confidently challenge knowing there was someone there. So we get that pick, but let's say Ant died here. Let's say uh, number four got the kill. That puts us in a really bad position. You know, there's a lot of times 
where you're trying to play for picks. And if you get first blooded, that's really going to hurt your chances of actually winning the round. Uh, not only because you're down a man, but you're not coordinated with anything. You're all fully spread across the map. Now you have to take that time to regroup together and actually make another play while you're still down a person. But we're able to win this gunfight and is able to stay alive. And Brandon gets a huge kill at A solo on someone that was top bedroom. And that's big information because once he gets that kill and he sees the other guys, he can relay it to his team to wrap towards that B side because no one will be there. We know that number four is dead. We know that number two is dead. And if he sees one or three over here, there's no one on that B site to contest it. So that's exactly what happens. Number three actually gets the trade on Brandon here. He also sees number one here, uh, top glass though. So we know where the last two are alive. And now we can go and confidently wrap towards B. Just get on your high horse and instantly go towards that B site and plant it because it's wide open. So that's exactly what we do. We get the B site cleared. We're playing angles to make sure that they can't retake on it. Uh, we get this bomb down and now we can play a 3v2 post plant. And just while we're here, let's go into a little post plant setup. What we're doing here is snaking this kitchen table, making sure that we can either help the back or the front. This door is closed. So once we know it's open, uh, he can play for this then. And number seven is watching this door. Number six is watching anyone that might be going through Beacon to Freezer or might be going through this catwalk and trying to retake through there. So everything is pretty much covered for us as long as number five stays alive for the help. Number seven and number five can really teamwork with each other and try and finesse through these tables and have a really good post plan set up that way. So I'll go over another example of where actually a spread was working for us. Again, this is versus LAT, but it's actually in the match previous uh, to the one I was showing you in the clips early on. But once again, they're actually sending 3A and actually you can make a case for 4A with this guy going couches. So what we're going to do here is react to the info that we're getting. So obviously same type of setup. We have our two guys towards this B side. We have one guy playing a little bit safer towards the lobby and we have one person uh, towards this P4 God heady. So what's going to happen here is number four is going to shoot at number seven, as you can see here. And since they're going to back him down and they don't have information at B and they know no, we're not going fast day. They have to kind of respect the B hit and actually you're going to send people to wrap back. But because of this information that we have, we're already in the cat room. We know that one is probably towards B just because of standard tendencies. And we know that there are multiple towards A because of the information that seven got. But what we're going to do here is a really good mid round call by Ant. And this is really important because like I said before, if you don't have a player that can make those mid round calls or find a gap in the setup and make a call based off of that, it's really, really hard to play these spreads. But as you can see here, Ant finds the gap, hits this catwalk, goes towards top bed, and is now watching the rewrap back towards A because he knows that LAT are gonna be trying to reinforce B uh, once they had no one sent over there to begin with, and we had that free plant if we wanted to go for it. So from this position, Ant is playing top bed, watching anyone that might be wrapping back, and what he can do is make a call to the rest of his teammates to start pushing towards the A site uh, together. So what you wanna do here is, in case they left anyone towards his A site, let's say they put someone uh, towards L here or is playing a corner over here. You want to be making sure that you're using teamwork to actually clear this site because uh, the rear reinforcements are going to be cleared by Ant here. So number seven and number five can teamwork onto the A site, try and get this bomb planted. Actually, we don't know this, but there is nobody at the A site. Uh, but we don't know that in the moment. We still have to clear uh, anyone that might have been pushed through towards, you know, let's let's say spa or had been staying on the A site, like I said before. So we start making our way towards A. Number six, Ant is able to get that kill on number one. And now he even is able to help out uh, with actually retaking A here because he can go top bed here and watch if there was anyone that might have been staying towards this L side. Make sure that really uh, that site is fully cleared so they can get this free bomb plan in. And eight probably hears multiple towards the B side anyway. Uh, so we're going to get this bomb down and make sure that we can get this plan on in. Number eight is actually going to stay diner just to make sure you can get any cutoff kills for anyone that might be rotating through uh, the diner side. And we're able to get this bomb down and we're going to win this round because of the information that we were able to get. Use some teamwork with that man advantage, but it all stemmed from that mid round decision and gap that Ant was able to find. So when does a spread not work? And this is a really good example here uh, that we had versus Boston. You know, I actually keep finding these examples where they keep hitting 3A, but you'll see why it's actually such a good example. So once again, it's basically the same thing. We throw our tax, helped number two out, number four is watching uh, diner, number three is here at the God Heady, and number one is watching uh, anyone that might be pushing mid. So the round starts out with number three getting back down by multiple people bedside shooting towards him. Uh, so what he's gonna do is call to Dan to get the bomb from spawn 
on and work his way towards the B side because he sees the multiple towards A. Number two, Ant here is watching this cross, making sure that anyone uh, that had pushed onto the site or might be pushing through our base is not going to be contesting us while we're trying to wrap. And as you see here, Boston wraps towards B themselves. Unfortunately for us, we don't know that B site is completely empty and number two and number four are trying to work this, but they're just too slow. If they would have just hit it out, you know, together, they most likely would have gotten a kill if there was a guy B or if there was nobody there like it is right now, they would just have that free set control and then can play together in case anyone was trying to retake onto the site uh, like number seven or number five here. And because we're taking our time and because we were spread, bomb is gonna be a little bit late. Uh, just naturally because we were playing the spread, we're just taking our time way too much. Number two and number four kind of back off of it, try and take a different angle. And now we're making the call to take some mid control. But unfortunately for us, we still have to clear mid. We never really cleared mid fully. You know, Ant was kind of watching this cross here, but he was only doing it for a brief period of time and then tried to work towards B side. So they could still technically be mid. And now Boston is just not giving anything to us. Look how they're playing. They're just playing super tight towards the back of their spawn, playing these crosses, making sure that they have everything covered and are basically just trying to play a retake letting us kind of get the bomb down if we wanted to get that site control unfortunately for us we're just not taking enough initiative and not making any sort of play together towards these sites and it's just taking way way too long like i said before if you're making these mid-round decisions but if you're taking way too long to do it and have to re-clear things it's just really a recipe for disaster if you're playing a spread you see we're trying to make plays mid here we get first blooded from this guy pool and now once again they can play kind of safe just wait for us to plant especially with a man disadvantage now we got to make some moves and actually make some plays we still see people rotating back and forth towards back pool here take some shots now we make the call to go towards this b site but number one dies with bomb from another guy that was pool so it really just all blows up in the middle round because we were taking way too long to actually make something happen so thank you guys for making this to the end of the video on this full-on breakdown of what it's like playing a spread on offense and i'll see you guys in the next one